Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg and how are you guys going? Yes, it's been another week where I missed my video. What's it happening? I, I think we're going to uh, fortnightly videos. What do you think? No, I don't like it either. So, no, we've got to get back to the weekly, weekly videos. And I had, I had all good intentions guys of doing a video last weekend. But I, the project that I took on was bigger than I thought it would be. And um, I was going to film, I was, first of all I was going to film Saturday, that didn't turn out. And then I was going to do Sunday and I still hadn't finished. So I thought, well look, I'll just get it finished up and um, I needed to test a few other things and I got there in the end. But of course I didn't have time to film, so, so that is why. So I've got something to show you guys, but uh, as per the title, if you're a RK purist, best to look away. <laughs> Best to look away. Don't come back. You're an arcade purist. Go. Okay, just let them go. All gone. Cool. Hang on, who's left? <laughs> oh, you are. Okay, cool. Thanks for staying. Um, yeah, look, if you uh, if you don't like uh, like original arcade games being hacked, then this this is this is a warning. Okay. And even though I say that, actually, it's not as bad as it might as it might first sound. I am very careful with preserving history where um, where it's appropriate to do so, of course. But sometimes there's some practicality things, and you have to make some tough calls and hard decisions. So I think I made the right decision. We'll see what you guys think. So what happened? Well, remember the last video, which was two weeks ago. Um, I was talking about all those things that I got fixed from Joey and uh, sure enough I actually got the, uh, the the board into the World Rally which had the sound fix so that's all working and sweet. Um, I haven't got around to using the monitor chassis that he, uh, he, he gave me. We had the uh, power board for the Spacey so I don't have the Spacey's board yet so I couldn't do anything with that. The one thing I wanted to do though guys, if you recall, was the pole position board. So, I think I said in the last video, I thought about a 20% chance of that working. That was my thought process. And um, so I decided to uh, fire it up. And, and again, guys, I didn't, didn't, didn't film this. I think I was just um, way too tired. <laughs> but I did take a couple of photos and I fired it up and I got this. Unfortunately, it just got to the first piece of graphics and sat there and there was some little flickering of um, a little flickering of lines and graphics just in the top right hand corner. Top right hand? Yeah, top right hand corner. And what happened was that it, would, it seemed like it was just resetting, like it was watchdog resetting. And when I tested it on main to see what it should be doing, that first graphic is the first graphic you should see and then it should have like lots of zeros and letters and stuff like all over the top of it as it carries through the boot sequence it doesn't get to do all those lettering so clearly something is happening and it's i think it's just watchdog resetting um, now that joey sort of fixed up all the traces and everything so i guess on the one hand it's actually stable in terms of every time you turn it on you get exactly the same result whereas before it was like pretty much random if i could actually get in and, and play the game or not um and then it would reset and all the rest of it but unfortunately because it's so stable doing what it's doing it's not doing anything <laughs> it's just sitting there resetting so guys you know again I, I wasn't super disappointed i thought it was a long shot getting it getting it working I did actually, if you recall in the last video, I t um, Joey was so kind to give me a replacement board set that he f had found, but it was a parts board. So when I took that apart, it was slightly different layout. The top board on it was different to the one that I had. The ROMs were seen to be in a different layout, um, although the, the sockets and everything on the other two boards were all the same. It was just the top board that was different, but then all the ROMs were all sort of laid out, laid out differently. 
and there was one custom chip that was missing off it but anyway guys i thought well look i'll just try and swap the custom chips over and um you know just see if i could get a different result and no <laughs> so i spent a lot of time on that because taking out the board and take it's a three you know a three uh, sandwich board set so i had to take all that apart and putting those three board sets together guys pain in the butt um just with the connectors and stuff you know what i mean if you've done it yourself and anyway so i had you know changed all the chips and did all that testing and uh, it came up the same um so in fact one point i got worse i got nothing <laughs> i got no booting at all um and other times with other custom chips i uh i just got the same result so it seems like it's really dying you know early on in that initial boot sequence it's not getting anywhere so so guys, I had to do a little bit of soul searching <laughs> and think, what am I going to do? Because this is a massive, I mean, this pole position, of course, is in my grand champion cabinet. And it's just a massive cabinet, guys. It's a huge cabinet in here. And it really needs to serve a, a good purpose. <laughs> Not just sitting here, you know, inability to play it at all. So... I, I will let you in a little secret and that is that I always intended actually after I got this cabinet and got it in here and had a bit of a thing, especially after I, I moved everything around here in the theatre guys, I thought, you know, one thing that I was lacking was I couldn't actually set up my steering wheel and stuff to play sim racing. Um, and that was always not an ideal solution anyway on the little portable stand and sitting on the couch and you're so far away from the the screen the projector screen so i had in the back of my mind guys that i would actually convert this grand champion to play pc driving games which means i would have to swap in the pc controllers um, which means that i would have to remove parts of the uh, cabinet to do that so it all came to a head i just thought right that's it um i you know I seriously, if the pole position was going to work, I was going to just leave it like that and play pole position for a while until I basically sort of got tired of it, and then uh, and then I was going to like you know do the the conversion. But seems it all came to a head. I thought, well, let's just dive in and <laughs> get this thing done. So, guys, it was a huge job actually. And you know when I show you you know this, the the change and running it now. Uh, again, I didn't film the whole process just simply because it took me that. It took me Friday night, it took me Saturday, it took me Sunday. I had the help of my son, and it's bizarre, really, because I sort of think back and think, why did it, why did it take me so long uh, to do it? I mean, the reason is is that um, I, you know, first of all, I had to remove everything that's in there in terms of the controllers and everything from the the Grand Champion, and get all the stuff out the back and remove all the wiring. Um, but yeah, I um, I took some photos al along the way to sort of capture it. I'm going to try and think through exactly why it took me took me so long. Um, but the big the key thing was is that when I've got the PC hardware in there, I had to make up a whole new shelf, and that's where the that's where things really slowed down because I initially was just going to attach it just you know and have it sort of temporarily attached with the with the you know PC um, uh, the Thrustmaster 458 uh, steering wheel. But as I got into it, I thought, no, I really want to make it better. I want to make it nice and sturdy at a right angle and stuff. So then I thought, oh, now I need to make a shelf. And then I thought, well, if I make a shelf, I've got to make it relatively decent and sturdy. And then one thing led to another. And next minute, I'm like just engineering solutions and not very great good ones because <laughs> it's not really my forte but anyway so look looking through some of these shots here guys you can see oh, like i removed the original steering wheel and it's still cool that, that original steering wheel had those original gauges from the grand champion and oh by the way before i go any further i should say remember this grand champion was converted already to pole position the original the monitor wasn't in there that's a replacement monitor it was of course changed from vertical to horizontal all the scoreboards the leds that comes with the grand champion weren't there the original wiring harness wasn't there the original board wasn't there basically it was a shell that had been converted anyway guys so it's not like really i've sort of destroyed history in this case and in actual fact i've removed all the parts all those parts can be put back exactly how they were so it's it's really no big deal anyway moving on so i took the uh took the original uh steering um uh control panel off there was quite a few screws to get to and of course a lot of them were rusty and stuff so that took a little bit of a uh, little while and then i had to actually remove the steering wheel itself and that was in multiple pieces 
just these things are never 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 easy and i remember i have to go around the back of the cab and remove the bolts for the um for that whole control panel and have my son holding the front otherwise the thing would flip over so there was there was a little bit of work to be done and then i had to remove the speakers because the speaker wiring that went through to the original harness for the pole position was all wired up and i didn't want to cut it all guys i thought well i can take that harness out and i can actually still in fact i wanted to get that harness out get the, the power supply out and then i can actually run this thing up run the pole position up on a bench in which case it could be easy, easily tested. Now, if I don't do that, then I could also take it to Joey and Joey could also run it up with all the original uh, wiring. And maybe I will still do that because I think that board actually is pretty close. It's actually pretty close to working and it was only because Joey fixed it blind. He could test it. So anyway, I got the, uh, got the whole speaker uh, cabinet thing down from the top, the speaker box rather, just so I could get to the wiring and get all that out without cutting it. And uh, you can see the, the cabinet there is starting to come, come apart and the, the surround, of course, had to come out. And, uh, and then out the, in the back, of course, I had the original monitor chassis and then I had to get the monitor. And getting the monitor out of this thing, guys, was just a nightmare because just, again, the angle and the weight of these monitors, you know what it's like. If you've taken out one of these monitors, you know it's pretty difficult. I had to discharge it, of course, first. So that was a couple, uh, two-man job really, one around the back just to make sure the monitor didn't fall backwards, <laughs> me around the front trying to pull it through. So I got that out, um, removed all the panels from the, the, the front finally and got to the main shelf. And then I actually had to take off the, the, the shelf and the, there was a, um, uh, like a fold, the fold-up uh, metal plate on the bottom which actually folded the control panel up. Of course, I, I didn't need that. And so once I took all that off, um, I then went to the pedal. And now, if you recall, I was trying to get into the pedal box previously because I knew that I would have had to fix the original uh, pot that was was I knew had been playing up anyway, and it was needed a replacement. So, and I was, and if you, if you recall that episode last one or the one before and I was talking about I couldn't get to the open up the wooden box at the back for where the pedal is because it had screws in there and they were cross-threaded and um, and you know someone recommended to use that um, easy out bit thing but you really actually can't get a, a, a drill in there so anyway I actually found I looked a little bit harder <laughs> it didn't really look properly the first time I looked a bit harder and I found that on the front side of the the pedal there was a couple of bolts and they were sort of hidden because they were um, so rusted over. So I just met, I just took those two bolts out and then the whole pedal assembly uh, actually came out. So, so that was sweet in the end. And then it was really just a tidy up around the back, you know, taking out all the wiring harness, the, you know, the original power, the transformer for the monitor. All of that had to be unscrewed and taken out. It just took time, guys. It just took, took a lot of time. And eventually uh, I got all of that out and then it was a matter of you know building a, a shelf so I, I had to use a bit of old uh old kitchen shelving that that i had knocking around in the garage um and uh got that all measured up and bolted and then i had a, a spare piece of wood that i could use for a monitor now i actually had an ultra wide monitor screen that i was going to use for another application never did and it's been sitting around and I haven't been using it. And I thought, look, rather than go and buy and spend more money, I've already got the monitor, so I would use it. Now, it's not actually as big as I would like, but I thought this is a good way to just test it um, and see what it's going to play like with an ultra wide in the cabinet. So I, I had to create a bit of a backboard to get this thing uh, screwed in. And then I, <laughs> I screwed the original holes of a standard visa mount and then realized that it was smaller than that after I'd done all that, <laughs> measured it. So then I had to redo that, cut a hole for the cables and stuff. It's just all this, all the little stuff, guys, you know, taking the wood out, getting getting the, the, um, the drill bits and the, um, the jigsaw and doing all the cuts. It just took a lot of time. Took out the speakers. I got some uh, Logitech speakers. The um, oh god, what are they again? The five five three, the Z five five three. Is that right? That, that they're just absolutely awesome speakers. And I managed to just get them fitting in the speaker box. Now originally, and I must say, and maybe I will change it at some point. But um, really, this cabinet would suit a full four four way system because it's got the the speaker positions at the back. 
But again, guys, to do that would have been a lot more running cables up through here. I would have had to get extension cables. It's just a whole world of pain around that. And so I decided, look, I'll just get some decent, you know, um, 2.1 Logitech speakers, or same ones that I've used in the Astro City and stuff. I used that, put it in here, and oh, it cranks. It absolutely cranks. So, guys, that was the mission. Thanks to my son, Mitch, who really helped me, uh, especially on Sunday on, and most of Saturday as well. Uh, without him, I wouldn't have been able to probably complete it. And then during the week, uh, this week, guys, I've been running up different software. Now, I originally wanted to just run up, you know, things like Forza Horizon 3, um, which is, just looks absolutely awesome in ultra wide. Uh, but then I sort of thought, well, hang on, how do these old, uh, how do the old games uh, play in terms of Daytona? So I did some playing around with Daytona. And if you go way, way, way back, you will see the original Daytona video that I had about showing how you get multiple Daytonas running at once, networked or even on your on one PC, but still having talking to each other, having multiple instances going. Well, this time uh, I did that all back then, I think just using a controller at the time. This time I've rigged it up with the steering wheel, with force feedback, with the shifter, independent shifter. I've now got the full Daytona experience, guys. <laughs> Absolutely the full. And not only that, of course, it's upscaled and in ultra wide. And we're talking ultra wide at the right perspective, okay? So with Daytona 2 and all the Supermodel 3 emulated um, games, all of those are the correct perspective and the way that the, pro the software works is it's giving you an extended view of the 3D graphics. Everything in 2D is, you know, the 2D screens of, of Daytona and so forth show up, you know, in, um, just in the middle of the screen, but everything else is in the right perspective. Now, with the Model 2 for playing Daytona 1, the first Daytona, I can play ultra-wide but I can't get the exact resolution for ultra wide. It doesn't quite support it, uh, the emulator. So it will, it will support widescreen, but it won't support ultra wide. So I can still run it ultra wide, but it actually is slightly stretched. So, um, but still it's absolutely playable. Again, Daytona one, full steering, full force feedback, full gear stick. I've got one small problem with the gear stick though because it was positioned on my couch for so long guys and I keep moving around the couch I ended up scrunching the cable so many times that it actually got a few rips in it. I had actually taped it up um, but it's playing up on me so I go into second and it sort of like registers third and fourth and you know sometimes second so it jumps around but I can show you that it does actually work and once I get that cable fixed it will all be sweet. So guys that's it that is what I have <clears throat> been working on. On. I had all good intentions to film last week and show you guys. I'm sort of glad that I actually waited and this week really worked out how Daytona and everything could work on it. I think going forward, there's definitely going to be some follow-up videos with this with different driving games. I mean, I really, really love my driving games, guys, really do. And I haven't shared a lot of that with you um, and even some of the later titles. Um, Set of Corso, and um, you know, I've been a Project Cars fan, and of course, um, Project Cars 2 is coming out soon. Um, but there's a ton of other car games in there that I'd like to show, and in this cabinet, it's just awesome. <laughs> it really is worth it. Like, once I've finished all this work, guys, I just thought, you know what, all that hard work was damn well worth it this is so so good i feel like i've actually got you know, when i'm playing daytona i've got a daytona machine when i'm playing you know um a set of course i feel like i'm in a sim when i'm playing um Forza horizon 3 i'm just in an in an arcade you know latest greatest graphics looks just crazy awesome at ultra wide so i am absolutely happy with this 100 percent you couldn't change my mind on it if you tried and I hope you sort of appreciate what I've done here as well, guys, because I think this has really given this cab another lease of life. And, you know, I just love the cabinet. I love the artwork. It's so cool to have such a classic sort of uh, cabinet and to be able to use it and, and, and play all these cool games, both old and new in it. It's just absolutely awesome. The only thing 
The only thing, oh, by the way, because I've mounted the, the shifter up high um, on the uh, next to the wheel there, um, of course, I've got the spare shifter down below and from the original one. So I've been looking at that thinking, oh, I might take that out and actually put a couple of cup holders in there. <laughs> and then I could sit there and just have, you know, have my drink down the side. That would be, that would be awesome. But I must admit, the seat okay the seat is just hard plastic so like doing a, a marathon sim session in there it's not gonna work very well i don't think so um i might have to look at it now i did actually this has got two locks on it um in terms of being able to get around the back of the seat and around by the back of the speakers i did actually drill out the bottom lock and look under there I can see that the whole seat actually could come out, so I might, and I really am leaning towards this, guys, because I really need a comfy seat. I probably will, I've gone from might to probably, <laughs> I, I probably will take out the hard seat, and uh, I think I'll get a real seat from the wreckers, from a real car, and have a real car seat in there, something really nice and comfy, and I think that then would, it's just gonna finish it now I'm a, I am torn a little bit there because that will change the aesthetics quite a bit and also it will change the feel once you sit in there because it really does at the moment feel like you're in an arcade because even with that seat because that's how they are um, if I change that out and put a car seat in it I, I may lose a little bit of that sort of nostalgic feeling of being in there but I, you know I, I think for the sake of my back and, uh, and comfort um, I, I think I'll get over that pretty quick the other cool thing of course you could take the roof off of this so so you could get this sort of cocoon feeling when you're in, in in playing these games which is great but if you've got other people over and stuff you can take the roof off and it's more open and sort of more social and people can lean over the back and and watch you can watch of course through the glass anyway uh, or the perspex that's on the uh, the top but i just you know i i again and really 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 grateful about getting this cabinet and just feel very lucky that this cabinet was sitting for so long for the price that it was no one picked it up and it's just i really really do love it so even though i have sort of converted it i don't feel i've lost the soul of it um it's still a grand champion cab in my eyes and it's still got this awesome artwork which i can't stop going on about so anyway guys let's just take a look and a bit of Daytona running ultra wide, Daytona 2 running ultra wide in perfect perspective. Okay, guys, let's get into a bit of Daytona 2. Now, what I'll do is I'll first of all show you it going with the shifter. Now, the shifter, as I said, is playing up, so I'm going to have limited success. You'll see the H shifter jumping around because of that problem I've got with the wiring. But anyway, I'll show you that it does work, so let's. Um, Let's start. I'll use the uh, basic lap to start with. A professional car. And let's choose manual. And let's see how far we get with the manual. It's going to be a bit messy, guys. Move down a little bit. But how good is the graphics? Look here, guys. I'm in the fourth. Am I in fourth? Yep, I am in fourth. So you'll see this flicking around. Especially when I change up and back into third and see how far I can get. Oh, is it even registering? Oh, yep, there we go. Third. Yep, back into fourth. It's not going to behave like that all the time, though. Good so far. But, you know, guys, once I get the, the, the cabling sorted out, um, just this is the experience. This is the Daytona experience, you know, with the shifter. I've got force feedback going on. Um, it really, you know, given the fact that I'm in this cabinet, it just feels like I'm in a arcade playing Daytona 2. Um, but again, look at the graphics, they're all upscaled. So it's nice and smooth. It's very, there's some jaggies, but not a lot of jaggies. If you take it out of full screen mode, you're, you can actually see that it gets back to the original graphics, quite a big difference. Um, but look, Daytona 2 actually is, is a really nice game and the graphics in this is awesome on the Supermodel 3. Um, but this is what I'm really going to look forward to, is just getting this feel 
slapping the gears. I mean, this, these are solid too, these um, uh, Fanatec gear sticks. So they really feel arcade quality. And because I've fixed the steering wheel so firmly uh, to the cabinet here, it really feels like it's, you know, it's part of the machine. Uh, much like an arcade would so you know you really do you really do get lost in the game that's for sure oh whoops I shouldn't have changed there coming back into fourth but guys this this is so much fun it really is I'm not really concentrating that much but uh, I'm, not a, I'm not an expert on this either, but now I've got the uh, game set up like this, I'm definitely going to be playing so much of this. And I had my, uh, my youngest girls actually playing on uh, Daytona 1 on the beginner track, and they just absolutely love it, you know, and given all the latest games you can play. In fact, I had uh, Forza Horizon playing and they played that, but it's quite difficult to drive. But you get on to the original Daytona playing the first track on Beginner and they just loved it and wanted to play it again and again and again. So guys, as you can see, that is just absolutely crazy. Let's flick over to Daytona and I'll show you how that it's not quite the right perspective because it doesn't quite support the ultra widescreen. But it, nevertheless, it's still perfectly playable and looks awesome. So let's have a look at that now. So guys, I just want to show you the difference in graphics. So this is obviously original Daytona, and you can see here that you know the graphics are sort of quite blocky, um, and that's how the original graphics would be. And of course, on a CRT, it looks a it would look a little bit different again. Uh, but now, if we actually go full screen with this, you'll see that it will then clean right up, and now you've got really nice smooth lines, and that's just the benefit of running it on an emulator, guys. It's just unbelievable, and to get it widescreen. Now you can see there that this is the widescreen format, and it's just slightly stretched because it's just doing 16 by 9 and stretched ultra wide, but it still it doesn't look that bad. So let's play the classic track in Daytona, which of course is the beginner track, <laughs> and it's still pretty tough. Let's try and see if we can do manual again. We had a bit of success. It's just going to flick in and out, but uh, let's give it a go. There's really just the one corner on this anyway that you've got to worry about. Get it to fourth. It's third. Come on. Get it to fourth. Ah, third. Come on. Okay, so you can see the guys, I'm having a bit of, bit of problems here. And right, third. I just cannot get it to register fourth. But sometimes you go into fourth and it sort of registers second. But uh, so I'll come down to second. Back up to third, so I can go to second to third quite easy. It's just not registering fourth. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll cut out of here and go into automatic mode uh, just to at least have a, have a game on here. Okay, so let's have a go, and this time we shall put it on automatic. Seems the shifter is not behaving. I'll get that cable fixed. I can't actually buy that cable separate too, which is really, really annoying. So it looks like I'm going to have to try and fix it. I'll do that for another day. Okay. By the way, I've set my steering wheel to 240 degrees. I could probably go lower. It seems pretty good in terms of turning response. Whoops. Of course, I forgot about that corner. And funnily enough, I mean, on this beginner track, um, and you really do need your gears, I think, to do this corner properly, because um, you tend to sort of change down into it. Well, I think there's a way of sort of, yeah, braking and sliding in like that. That's the other way you can do it, I guess, when you're on automatic mode. But yeah, it's still challenging. It's like a it's such a basic track, but it's still such a challenging game to actually get first place. Um, and sometimes, I, you know, I don't even finish the eight laps. You've got to, you've got to be on point. And like 18 seconds, I think at the at the split time isn't good enough. You've sort of got to be on the 17, I think, or maybe 16. It's like ideal. 16 or 17, one or the other. 
So that's the brake technique. I almost got around there cleanly. We're on lap five of eight. And I'm 13th. Alright, we'll get a few more cars here. I should have back I have backed off on the accelerator there, I shouldn't have done that. We'll get this cleanly through here. Come on, come on. Oh, almost. The 11th. I mean, this is great driving, but it's not that great. That just wasn't not taken well. Ninth. Okay. Probably slowed up too much that time. Still on 18 seconds. A few of the cars here. I haven't crashed into them. And we've got a few lap cars, I think, as well, haven't I? And they're all, they're all the leaders. Okay, slow down a bit there. Final lap, come on, get off me. Slow me down a bit. So, ah, don't go on the grass. Oh no, no. Ah, teams. Lost a few, few on that last corner too. Yes, please. Guys, Damn. seriously, like I play this so many times and I just still just love this game. It's just crazy, it's just the playability of it, and now, this is your it name just, the other I don't know. There's not many games, guys, that have been, been written over the years that have this level of replayability. Daytona's awesome. <laughs> anyway, let's wrap it up. Okay, guys, and there you have it. And what do you think? I mean, seriously, it's, it's very, very cool, right? Remember, the, the graphics are all upscaled as well, so it's not only as a widescreen, but it's also anti-aliasing, and so it actually looks like it's a whole, like, a re-release of the original game. It really, really, really is a great experience. So anyway, that is it for a, another video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, I... Guys, I, I, every, every time I will try and do it uh, another video on a weekly basis. And of course, if I miss it again, I miss it again. But the thing is, it's like anything in life, right? You have good intentions to do something. If you miss something or you don't do what you set out to do, that's cool. Just move on and try again. <laughs> right, so I'll carry on getting back to the schedule and hopefully I'll make it for the next one. I've got fully committed to do so. If I don't, I don't. <laughs> All right, so I um, hope that you can uh, use some of that advice in your own life too because it's just no point sweating about things and giving up. <laughs> just keep on rolling on. There's always going to be those things that uh, upset the apple cart along the way. That's life. But, uh, but anyway, guys, I think that's it. And um, as always, enjoy your games, fix your games up and play them. Have lots of fun doing it. Um, if you've got a simulation and uh, like a driving setup and you like driving games and stuff, let me know as well. I'd be interested to see how many of you actually also like some of the later driving games as well. I hope you're going to enjoy some of those episodes coming up around all of that. But until next time, sincerely look after yourself, take care, and... Uh, We'll see you next time. And of course, ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it. You are amazing. The theater is now closed.